Amen. I want you to turn with me, first of all, please, tonight to the Gospel of Matthew. And we're in Matthew, please, chapter 18. The Gospel of Matthew, please. Chapter 18. You know, friends, this evening, we've got pastors, and we've got our ministers, and we've got our evangelists, all these different types of servants of God that bring to us the message of God. But my friends, tonight the most important person you really need to listen to is God's Son. And I want to read my text tonight that comes from the lips not of a minister, not of any evangelist or pastor, but the lips of the Lord Jesus now the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure everybody in this building tonight wants to be in heaven when you die. Surely there's nobody here tonight doesn't want to miss out in heaven. My friend, tonight the Bible makes it very clear it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this is the judgment. None of us tonight can escape death. And before each person here tonight, I want to tell you tonight, you face the great eternity. The great eternity where? And if you really want to be in heaven tonight, and you really want to know you're going to heaven, well then I want you to listen to the words of the Lord Jesus because what He's going to say now through His Word shows us very clearly the way in which you know you'll be going to heaven. I want you to turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 18. And this is how the Lord Jesus Christ tells us tonight and what He says how we can get to heaven. Matthew 18 and verse 3 the Lord Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now notice what Jesus didn't say. The Lord Jesus didn't say in this verse tonight, Except ye be Christians. Do you know tonight there's a whole lot of people in the north of Ireland who believe that the moment they were christened, they're starting for heaven? I wonder, am I speaking to someone in this meeting tonight, and you honestly believe because you were christened when you were a wee baby, that gives you access into the kingdom of heaven? Well, the Lord Jesus doesn't say, except you be christened, except you be converted. And neither does the Lord Jesus say in that verse tonight, except you be confirmed. A whole lot of people believe in Mengi. I was one of them. The moment I was confirmed, that, that sealed my place in heaven. My friend being confirmed tonight does not seal your place for heaven. The Lord Jesus says tonight, except ye be converted and become as little children, he says, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now listen, friends. You need to be converted. You know why I'm going to heaven, right? And it's not because I was christened. I mean, yeah, I was christened. But being christened didn't make me a Christian. 
And I mind the Sunday well when I was confirmed. And mind you being confirmed didn't make me a Christian either. But a night, I mind the night I was converted. Boys, what a night that was. When joy with a capital J and life with a capital L came into this heart and soul of me. Except you be converted. You know the Bible's full of people tonight who were God gloriously converted. You know, friends, this evening, did you know you can get converted suddenly just like that? Do you remember the Philippian jailer? Acts chapter 16, two minutes to midnight, there was a man who had no time nor thought for God. And you remember how God sent a great earthquake into the Philippian jail that night? And at one minute past twelve, that man was on his knees crying out to God, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And that was a man who got converted suddenly. But then you get other people who are converted slowly, like the dying thief. A man who is about to go into a lost eternity. Just at life's closing moments, he got gloriously converted when he trusted the Savior. And he got converted slowly. You know, I remember my cousin David Reed, you called him. David was dying with cancer. A man who was never near church except at weddings or funerals. And one day sitting in the living room, God spoke to David and told him that you're about to die and you're not prepared to meet me. And that day, David Reed sent for the wee minister. And he got gloriously converted. And tonight, David's in heaven. Some people get converted through sorrow. Like the great prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Do you know something? There's people got converted through a coffin coming through their door. I could take you to two homes. And I took a coffin coming through their door. I brought them to their senses. Many people were converted through sorrow. But I want you to come with me tonight to the book of Psalms. And we're going to read tonight about the greatest conversion that ever took place in the Old Testament. The conversion of the sweet psalmist of Israel, David. And in Psalm 34 tonight, and down there at verse 4, we have David the psalmist given his testimony. Now listen to me as you're turning over the page. We're reading now about the conversion of the man who penned the 23rd Psalm. David the psalmist knew he needed to be converted. And my friend, if David knew he needed to be converted, that should tell us that we all need to be converted. Now, how was David converted? Now, let's listen to his testimony. It's Psalm 34 and it's verse 4. He says, I sought the Lord. And he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. And friend, that's how the sweet psalmist of Israel was converted. He sought the Lord and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his fears. I want you to notice three simple steps tonight that the psalmist experienced. I want you to know, first of all, he came as a seeking sinner. I sought the Lord. Friend, that's how you get converted tonight. You must come to Christ as a seeking sinner. You must come tonight as one who knows they're lost 
And you must come to, to, to the one who alone can see it. I sought the Lord, David said. No friend, this evening you need to seek the Lord tonight. But you need to seek Him as a seeking sinner tonight. You need to realize that your immortal soul is lost. You need to realize, my dear friend, tonight, that if you were to die right now in your sin, you'll be in the fires of hell. But David, the great psalmist of old, could say, I sought the Lord. And you, friend, I want you to notice tonight, he came as a seeking sinner. Would you like to be in heaven tonight, Lord? What about you, sir? Would you like to be sure of heaven tonight? Well, you have to come like David of old. You have to come tonight as a seeking sinner. One tonight who knows their loss. One tonight who knows they are sinners. And my friend tonight, listen to me. When you come as a seeking sinner, you must come in repentance of your sin. Except ye be converted, Jesus said, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, that's how I got converted. I came as a seeking sinner on the 26th of August, 1985. And for six long months, mind you, I... I can tell you something now, I was 20 years of age. I was 20 years old and eight days to precise. There you are. 20 days and eight days old. And mind you, friend, I thought I had life. I used to go to the discos and the dances and the places of the world. And I thought I had life, but like we and all I had was in existence. And I remember one night sitting in Curly's bar. We called him Curly for he had the hair in his head. Not too long did they call me Curly, sure it wouldn't. And I remember that night sitting in Ivan Corns's. And I remember the Lord touched me that night, but I didn't know it was the Lord. And the Lord said, Is this it? Is this your life? You know, someone, friends, I thought I had a life, but you know what all I had? All I had was an existence. That was it. An existence. I played in the local bands and all the rest of it, but I knew this wasn't life. If you'd have told me that night that I was to become a Christian six months down the line, I'd have said to you, your head's cut. Me getting this safe business, no. But my friend God spoke to me. And God showed me my sin. God's speaking to somebody in this meeting tonight. God been speaking to somebody in this meeting these past nights. I and you went home trouble. You went home thinking, boys, if I don't get right with God and I die in my sin, I'll never see heaven. My friend tonight, David, came as a seeking sinner. And tonight you must come as a seeking sinner. Because that's how you get converted. David said, I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. You know, friend, when David sought the Lord, when David came that day as a seeking sinner, he found a sympathetic Savior. It says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me. Thank God tonight he's the sympathetic Savior. You know something like my dear own dear friend, the Lord Jesus Christ will hear you when nobody else will want to hear you. 
He's a sympathetic Savior. Friend, you read throughout that Bible of yours and mine, you'll find the Lord Jesus never turned one sinner away. Him that cometh to me, he says, I will in no ways cast out. No matter about your sin, love, Christ won't cast you away. He says, Sir, I have come that ye might have life, and that ye might have it more abundantly. What does the wee hymn say? Life, life, abundant life. Jesus alone is the giver. And that's right. My friend, tell me this. Do you know my Savior? I can tell you tonight, he's the sympathetic Savior. He's the one that cares tonight. You know something about my Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus tonight? He doesn't go about with a dipstick and dips it into your heart and say, ah, oh, there's too much sin in that man's heart. My blessed Savior doesn't care how far you are in sin. My Savior only cares that you look to Him. He's the sympathetic Savior. There was a farmer one day nailing up a post. And on that post there was a sign, Pups for sale. He didn't notice this wee lad coming up behind him and as he was nailing the post, he felt the tug on the tail of the coat. And he looked down and there was this wee boy just standing there and he says, Mister, Mister, what we... Would you let me buy one of them wee pups? And the farmer looked down and said, Ach now, son, come here a wee minute. You see them pups? They're prize-winning show pups. And you couldn't afford them. And the wee boy began to get all, began to fill up. And the wee lip began to tremble. He says, please, Mr. Wood, would you let me see the wee pups? And the farmer let a wee call out to me, says, Hey, Dolly, come on here, come on here, girl. And out she come running, and the wee bundles of fluff after her. Six wee pups come running out after her. And then they noticed that, noticed that there's another wee one coming, but as it was coming, it was falling over itself, and it couldn't really walk right. And the wee boy says, I, I, I would love to buy that one there, that wee hurt one. The farmer says, you wouldn't want to buy that pup, would you? That wee pup couldn't play about, it couldn't run about, it couldn't do things like these other pups. Oh, I, 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 I would love that wee pup now. The wee boy stood back. And he rolled up his trousers leg. And as he rolled up his trousers leg, both legs, the farmer saw that this boy had two metal calipers. He says, look, look at that there, he says. Sure, I can't run either. And I can't play like any other children. And that wee pup. It just needs somebody like me that understands its pain and its hurt. You know, friends, tonight, I bring you to my Savior who understands your pain. And he knows your hurt tonight. And he knows your birth. You know how I know he knows? Because he went to an old cruel cross. And there by wicked hands he was crucified. For the very reason why you hurt. And that tonight is because of sin. He knows your pain, love. He knows all about the horrors of sin, sir, because he suffered for your sin. And on that cross so long ago, my blessed Savior hung. 
and he hung there for sinners such as you and for me. My friend, does it not touch your heart tonight to know that the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you died on that cross and shed his blood so that we guilty hell deserving sinners could be forgiven. You know, friend, it's not God that closes you out of heaven tonight. It's not God. It's your sin. And it's your stubbornness, sir. It's your stubbornness. My friend, the Lord Jesus says, except you be converted. Listen, forget about being Christian and forget about being confirmed. Get converted. Except you be converted. And my friend, that transaction needs to take place tonight, sir. It needs to take place tonight, love. You need to come as a seeking sinner to the feet of a sympathetic Savior. And thank God tonight there's room at the cross for you. David came as a seeking sinner. And he found the sympathetic Savior. But glory to God, he found that day a satisfying salvation because the Lord saved him from all his fears. Did you know, David's experience was my experience. Did you know that? And I'll tell you why that is, because I had a great fear of dying. Have you a fear of death tonight? Listen to me. Have you a fear of death? Have you a fear tonight of meeting God? Listen. If you have, you should have. But the Lord Jesus wants to take that fear away because tonight He can come into your heart to be your Savior. There's a difference, you know. There's a difference when you're at the deathbed of a Christian. And there's a number of deathbeds I've been at of people who are dying saved. You want to know something? Friend, there's a sense of peace there. No fear of death. But I will tell you this, I have been at the deathbeds of people who won't see it, and I'll tell you they fight death to the end. Do you fear death tonight, sir? It's because you're not saved. It's because tonight Christ is not your Savior. There's a man in my old town, Knocknacloy, who was dying. And he sent for his minister. He said to the minister, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. And the minister took his hand. You know what the minister said to him? I'm sorry, but I can do nothing for you. I'm sorry. I can do nothing for you. When it comes to your dying, sir, I can do nothing for you. But there's one thing I can do. I can certainly bring you to the one who can do everything for you in death, and that's trust the Savior. There's a wee man from Ahana Clay called Ernie Colwell. He was a character, you know. Ernie was the wee man with a soft hat. You know, every town and village and every wee countryside had, had their local characters. I'm sure there's plenty of characters about Kilkeel. I've met a few of them. And they're not all Baptist either. <laughs> Glory to God. I had to keep this coat here because I kept it as a traffic light night to make sure I don't go any further. But now listen to me. Ernie Colwell was a character. We saw a man with a soft heart. Hat. He used to drive a Ferguson tractor. Do you remember the wee grey Fergies? Put your hands up if you remember them. Oh, there you go. Spot the pensioners. <laughs> and, he used to, and he used to drive a, 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 a Triumph Dolomite. Do you remember the 
triumph dynamites. Just keep your head. As George Shilliday does. Why should I think you had his, George? But he used to drive one of these wee triumph dynamites. And you could always hear Ernie coming before uh, about half a mile away. Ernie, the clutch would have been half out and her roaring. He, he used to put boring clutches by, by the bucketfuls. But Ernie Caldwell was a saved Presbyterian. And Ernie was in hospital. And Ernie was there today. At two o'clock in the morning, the wee nurse's station heard this voice coming from the wee side ward. And this man was singing. He walked in, and there it was Ernie singing that wee hymn. O God of Bethel, by whose hand thy people still are fed. The wee nurse went in and says, Mr. Colwell, would you not need to get a wee bit of rest? Because you need all the rest you can, because the doctors come around to see you in the morning. And you shouldn't be singing this time of night. You know what we Ernie said? We Ernie says, Oh, listen, dear. I'll tell you why I'm singing. Before morning I'll be in heaven's choir, and I want to get tuned up before I go. And he was in heaven's choir before morning. But Ernie had no fear of death because the Lord saved him and delivered him from all his fears. I'll tell you, friend, the Lord Jesus not only saves, he satisfies tonight. You have a fear of death, haven't you? You have a fear of dying now. And I'll tell you, it's a good fear to have. And you have a fear of meeting God tonight. Don't you? You're not saved. You have a fear of meeting God. I want to tell you tonight, you have no need to fear. If you come as a seeking sinner, bow tonight at the sympathetic Savior. Tonight you receive from Him a wonderful, splendorous salvation. You know, friend, tonight, except you be converted, if you're dependent on being christened when you were a youngster, listen, you're leaning on a broken stick. If you're depending tonight on being confirmed by the bishop, you're leaning, sir, on a broken stick. You'll be in hell when you die. None of these things see you. None of these things see you. You see them two hands of me? Hope they're clean, they are clean. Do you see them? There's my testimony tonight. Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to his cross I cling. Now listen. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question and finish. Are you troubled tonight? Are you troubled? Are you afraid tonight? Oh, that you were to die unsaved, man. To be lost in hell forever. Friend, that shall trouble you. Next Wednesday night, tomorrow night week, I'm going to preach on the second coming. When millions of people will disappear suddenly from this earth. And woe unto you if you're left behind. And that's if the Lord hasn't come back before next Wednesday night. The second coming. Next Wednesday night. But listen to me. Forget you about next Wednesday night. And you concentrate now on tonight. You concentrate now on this moment. My friend, get converted tonight. 
come to the Lord Jesus tonight in repentance of your sin and you trust the Savior. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And accept you be converted. Then get rid of the broken stick tonight. Come and get saved and trust the Savior. And friend, he will see it. If you only but come and trust him. Make him yours. My brother Jason gave me a book on Sunday. Of different men who were killed during the Troubles from our area in County Tyrone. As I looked at their photographs and as I read their stories, tears flooded my cheeks. You want to know why? Ten of them were my friends. Dennis Wilson. Didn't really know him. Cecil McNee. Franklin Cadu. Robert Bennett. But there was one man who stuck out. His name was Cyrus Campbell. Cyrus Campbell was a sea of man. A man of the member of the morning well, he was killed. And me and another man had to clean the car out and get it ready after the forensics were finished. I wasn't saved at the time. But I remember picking Cyrus's Bible up from a pool of blood in the front footwell of the passenger seat. Car splattered. Horrific sight. But I remember what Cyrus had written inside his Bible. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, I will fear no evil. If you were to walk through the valley of the shadow tonight, who have you got to go through the shadow with? As for me tonight, I have nothing to fear. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. <coughs> Friend, this evening, you pause now and you ponder. And you listen to what Jesus said. Accept me be converted. Forget about Christmas. Forget about confirmation. Get converted. And you'll be ready. If death should come, or the Lord should come, and to be converted tonight means all is well with your soul. Let's all take a wee moment now and bow in prayer together. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Take a wee moment now just to still ourselves in God's presence. I wonder tonight, has God been speaking to your heart? Has he been speaking to your soul? My friend, you're not answerable to me, you're answerable to God. And one day you're going to meet God. And the Lord Jesus' words to your heart is this, can I accept ye be converted? And friend, will you come like David? Will you come just simply as a seeking sinner? And find Christ tonight as the sympathetic Savior. And receive from him tonight that splendorous of salvation 
that will save you from all your fears. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, love. Thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And don't you miss this night of your opportunity. For a closing prayer, I want you to know tonight there's a little caravan just outside that's there for the purpose of going somewhere to speak to me privately. If you want to speak to me privately, it's there for you to come and bring someone with you who you know is a Christian if you're nervous tonight. But please don't you waste any more time. God has spared you and God has been merciful to you. God's mercy may just finish tonight, and out you'll go.